Let's go into magnesium a bit because you hit yeah. that one, but I don't want to gloss over because magnesium yeah. is a huge needle mover. Maybe we, let's dive into just a couple different forms for people that they could use. So last night uh, I did some magnesium oil. I did some spray on my legs, my calves. I started to feel a little cramp coming on. I thought, oh, you know, I was in the sauna over the weekend. I was sweating. I may not have replenished enough of my magnesium. So I did magnesium oil and I slept much better with the oil. So that's one topical form. And then uh, a lot of times you and I talk about magnesium glycinate, mm -hmm. but magnesium malate, I've had really good success with malate, especially for like muscle relaxation. Exactly. So magnesium is going to be excellent. It's a natural beta blocker, so it can relax your heart. So your heart's not beating out of your chest. Obviously, there's like a thousand enzymatic roles in the body for magnesium. So it's going to help with motility. It's going to help with blood sugar metabolism. It's going to help with inflammation in the brain. I think part of the mechanism and how magnesium works with mood too is it's highly anti-inflammatory to the brain. I saw a lecture with Russell Blaylock, who is a famous neurosurgeon, and he said clinically when he operated on people and he would give them post-op supplemental magnesium, they healed better than his colleagues' patients that had the same procedure. It was like a remarkable difference, he said. So supplementing additional magnesium really made a big difference. Magnesium 3 and 8, that's amazing. Magnesium 3 and 8 would be the other form I would recommend just because we do know magnesium 3 and 8 actually crosses the blood-brain barrier. So when you're talking about GABA, you know, supposedly being too big to cross the blood brain barrier and the pharma GABA is smaller and is more easily readily available right. to get through the barrier. Same thing with magnesium three and eight. So yeah. uh, if you do one to two grams of three and eight, that's going to get to the brain and you'll feel significant changes. I mean, we've used it for people with PTSD, you know, some of the literature, we use professional healthcare companies to manufacture our products and they'll give us some tech sheets on the back end and they'll have a whole list of symptoms why you would use three and eight and PTSD and anxiety is one of them. So we know these people think of anybody who's at a uh, stressful or traumatic event, which is pretty much every human ever, obviously some more than others. The three and eight to me is a good, a good remedy. I mean, if I had like a, a trauma clinic or like a PTSD clinic or something or a mental health clinic where, you know, let's say you've got people having mental breakdowns, you know, kind of back in the day, like my grandmother, her grandmother would talk about, oh, if you have a mental breakdown, you go to this hospital, you stay in there for a month and they send you home. I guarantee they weren't using magnesium three and eight because it wasn't invented back then. But uh, that would be something I would have in the protocol for people rather than yeah. uh, automatically going to the prescriptions. Yeah, and I know Blaylock, I don't even think Blaylock was using 3 and 8 back then because it wasn't really that big. Right? Yeah. I think he was using a standard citrate probably. Citrate's fine. It's a cheaper version. You can get it in natural calm. It can cause bowel your bowels to move. So some people do better with a malate or a, or a glycinate. Or if you know there's cognitive issues, we can do a magnesium that is a 3 and 8 that's better at crossing the blood-brain barrier. We love that.